Now, I don't usually write a fan letter to anybody, and I'm pretty sure I have never done so to a guy before. This is somewhat unrelated, but I've noticed how many girls I've done sexual things with either right before or right after the sex act said basically the same thing. Quote, I've never done this before. End of quote. And all too often, after they performed that certain sexual act with me in a suspiciously skilled manner that seemed to strongly imply they were highly experienced in doing said act with guys, I later find out that they've done exactly what they did with me with an amount of men that rival the amount of men who have played for the St. Louis Rams in the last ten years. I could be anybody. I could be a twelve-year-old girl searching for thrills on the internets. No, that's just one of the fantasies my therapist is trying to discourage. At least that one doesn't involve latex and farm animals. No need to feel guilty over fantasies involving things as innocent and trite as latex and animals. They are just fantasies, after all. And even if you had acted on those thoughts, it's not like you are in rare company in the performance of such things. Plenty of guys end up doing sexual acts with girls that resemble farm animals while wearing latex on their penis. Also, speaking of letting out one's inner child online, what's with all these guys coming on cam on Dickam showing off their seemingly toddler-sized phalluses? You, sir, are a gentleman. Thanks for the kind words. I at least make a facile attempt to feign cordiality, and apparently you were deceived by that. I don't really know you, but there isn't any reason for this message to start off sounding like it was from a lawyer or a banker, or worse, a politician. You might mistake it for another restraining order, court summons, or business opportunity from a rich but desperate Nigerian official. Because Lord knows, but most likely not, that I've had my fair share of court summons and restraining orders. Seems you heard of the little incident when I was caught on a speedboat by the Coast Guard off the coast of California back in 1992 doing nigh unspeakable, and athletic I might add, sex acts, to my wife's illegally bought orangutan, and it seems you are also aware of the legal minefield that was left for me in the wake of that event. By the way, orangutans give the greatest, most explosively powerful, and yet beautifully passionate hand jobs I have yet been the recipient of. Oh my, I just realized it seems I've marginally digressed from more important matters in the email. Before I go any further, I have to bring up this thing you mentioned about your escapade with your wife's illegally bought orangutan. Personally, I found this whole story quite disturbing. In fact, I was very offended by what you said you did. What the hell is wrong with you, dude? Are you fucking nuts? You should never fuck around with those illegal orangutans. Those black market orangutans have STDs that would scare a Bolivian dick slug back into a larval state. And yes, I realize that slugs do not go through a larval stage. The Bolivian dick slug is called such only due to its hideous slug-like appearance. Ugh! I don't even want to think about those nasty bastards. Actually, slugs do go through a larval stage. And when the dreaded Bolivian dick slug is in this stage, it looks so disgusting, it would perhaps cause the most battle-hardened man from World War II who won the Medal of Honor to shriek in absolute terror, and to cry like a teenage girl from Stickham who just got shot and had her Jonas Brothers CD stolen. You should always buy the legal and vaccinated orangutans. You can always find them across the border in the better Simeon sex shops. 
an evening having your weenie whipped by an illegal orangutan sex slave may seem like a good time, but you'll be thinking differently a few days later when your dick falls off from Simeon Crotch Scuzz. Trust me. No, you don't have the coin to spend on the clean orangs. I admit this has been a problem the last year or so due to the devaluation of the dollar and the poor economy. It has hurt us all. But if you really feel like you need the orangutan experience, and you can't afford the clean ones, do like the rest of us and make do with an inflatable. Sure, it isn't as good, but vinyl friction burns is better than a case of primate scrotum rot. As far as all the orangutan sex stuff, I want to go on the record as stating that all my comments and advice were based on hearsay and anecdotal information. I have no personal knowledge of simian slash human sex practices and was not speaking from my own experience. It was never proven in court and my therapist had me confused with another patient of his. Stupid D.A. thought that my reputation for monkeying around meant something entirely inaccurate and took it completely out of context. That is my statement in the court records and I am sticking to it. But of course. Though, I must say, you presented a highly realistic mirage of a fellow hardcore veteran of the simian sex trade. I must say, I'm a bit disappointed to discover that you don't share my love of eating from the sweet fruits that are female simian vaginal secretions. To produce the secretions in the first place is perhaps the apex of picking from the high-hanging fruit. I was only trying to pro-offer a friendly warning to another person who was out there in the trenches every day. Honestly, have you seen the trenches lately? Terrible disgusting place. I have been in the trench, and it certainly can produce quite a stench. Especially ones that are French. The stench they produce is so vile, it causes my sphincter to powerfully clench. Some are also so wrinkled, they resemble the asshole of Judy Dench. Some cause me to projectile vomit at such a tremendous velocity, the pile of vomit moves faster than a baseball thrown by prime Johnny Bench. After that happens, I need a time out, and I sit for weeks on the sexual inactivity bench. I have included Bolivian dick slug into my vocabulary. I don't get to use it every day, but I try to bring it into the conversation whenever possible. I imagine that you may be a very unique and engaging conversationalist at Thanksgivings with the family. One can incorporate Bolivian dick slug in that situation in this manner. Aunt Matilda, it's not your delectably badly undercooked turkey, nor the mashed potatoes that look like they are a porn star's vomit after sucking a monumental multitude of massive man-meat that's causing my convulsions, but rather the fact I caught the Bolivian dick slug from a rather profligate female. At least I think it was a female. During an unfortunate rendezvous that occurred in the back seat of the car I borrowed from you a while back. I find saying things like that can cause many exciting things to happen. But enough of my prior adventures. I like the way you handle the, shall we say, rather trollish people who occasionally enter your chat. These random encounters have provided me with much amusement, as it has you. I have noted the grin on your face when you have traded reposts with someone in your chat or verbally bitch slapped someone in a video. What the hell? Where did repost come from? I know I have never used that in a sentence before. Must be the late hour and lack of sleep. 
Anyway, I am under the impression that you enjoyed the dance more than your unfortunately retarded adversary did. And that is the whole point, isn't it? I admit, I greatly enjoy my verbal tangos with those mentally challenged individuals. Getting in that type of dialogue with those types and giving them my reposts is analogous to having sex with retarded girls. It's not very difficult to pull off. They tend to make a lot of noise during the act. They tend to feel quite a bit of pain that takes quite a while to recover from. They tend to tell many people about it afterwards. And I tend to really enjoy it. Also, both dancing the dunce tango online and fucking retarded girls border on guilty pleasures for me, although both can make me quite laugh quite a bit, and both are things that many people seem to frown upon.